Hi, and welcome back to Star Conflict Tutorials. Today we'll tell you all you need to know about the update 1.4.3 Evolution Factor. This patch introduces new weapons, a brand new ship for Illidium, and a PvE mission called Ariadne's Thread. Well, to be brutally honest, this patch adds a lot more, so get yourself some favorite beverage and let's dig in into the meat of this together. How about we begin with the ship? Meet Ty Keen a recon interceptor upgradable from rank 5 to rank 15. Build yourself a cockpit, then add some crystals to it, just like you would with a Targa. Well, apart from the fact that you will need some different resources this time around, a fully developed interceptor, just like Targa, has five totally different modules to use, and five visual styles too. Naturally, not all special modules will be unlocked from the start. In order to unlock them, you will have to first upgrade your ships as rank. The newest addition, the Taikin, is rank 5 and has a Warp Vortex special module by default. Activate it to teleport a short distance and to increase your own speed and speed of your allies along the jump route by one and a half times. But remember, the bonus will disappear immediately if your ship changes course. At rank 7, you will get a special module called Return Crystal. Use it to spawn a special warp beacon on the map. Activate the module once more to warp back to it. Taikin will also drag all enemy machines within 200 meters along with it. This way, you can easily bring a number of enemy ships right into a trap where your allies lie in wait. But there's a catch. The beacon can be physically destroyed. Also, you have just one and a half minutes to warp to it once the beacon has been placed. Think fast. Next is the so-called Jump Crystals module, which unlocks at rank 9. With it, you can make up to four jumps in quick succession. Your ship will leave a special cloud in its wake, which will eat away at every enemy ship it comes across. Jump crystals can build up to four charges, one every 15 seconds. One charge equals one jump. But bear in mind, every time you activate this module, it will damage your ship slightly. At rank 11, you can unlock a module called Quantum Leap. Use it to return your ship to its former state eight seconds ago. We mean total reversal, including position on the map, hull points, and even energy. But if the former location on the map is currently occupied, however, your ship will have only a few seconds to move out of the way, or it will be automatically destroyed. The final special module available is Jump Drive, unlockable at rank 13. Its operational principle is similar to a micro-warp engine used by regular recon interceptors or jump crystals that we just mentioned a while ago. High-speed flight is what makes it similar to the micro-warp engine. The jump drive also has the damaging cloud associated with jump crystals, but this time the cloud will grow in size gradually. Not to mention that the jump drive leaves an active trail behind the ship when used. It will damage enemy ships that were unfortunate enough to come across the trail right after you jump. The new Interceptor has its own grand selection of weaponry, upgrades and modules. Thar Ock Beamer is a unique electromagnetic weapon with two distinct firing modes. The first one fires a hail of bullets. Well, as you might have guessed, each individual bullet deals little damage, but they fly very, very fast and will certainly come in handy when you need to deal with small, fast and nimble opponents. Its alternate fire mode launches two homing spheres that deal tremendous damage if they hit. Why use the primary firing mode then? You see, the spheres are considerably slower, so at medium to long range they're only suitable to fire at a destroyer or such a large target. The second addition is a Tyal Launcher. It's a unique thermal weapon for those who prefer to shoot accurately, not fast. It fires two homing missiles, but the gun overheats in just three shots and takes a while to cool down. Tythok is the third new weapon of the list and can be installed on any recon ship, not just the Taikin. It fires colonies of crystal pseudo-organisms that can eat through spaceship hulls, ignoring the target's shield. Tythok is very effective versus Jericho and Federation craft, but the Imperial craft will be a tough nut to crack with pseudo-organisms. Okay, let's move on to combat modules. Hologram Crystal can create a copy of your interceptor. The real Taikin will be rendered invisible in the process for a short time. Quick and easy. Next is Crystal Destabilization, which periodically drops exploding crystals. Once they explode, they will leave behind the now familiar cloud. You enter it, you take damage. The cloud will disperse after a little while. Crystal Infiltrator is similar to Spy Drone's container. This module can mark a target on the radar and prevent it from going invisible. At the same time, the Infiltrator targeted enemy ship will take extra damage from your allies. 
Unlike the Spy Drones, the Crystal Infiltrator does not slow the enemy hull and shield regeneration. Further down the list is Harvest Crystal, another variation of the Interceptor's Locator's module. It works in a similar way, but also restores the shield of its owner by taking the shield energy from enemy ships. This might sound kind of nasty, but this is how the Illidium Corporation does things. Satellite Crystal is a device with two operating modes. By default, it will simply accelerate its user, but in the alternative mode, the Satellite Crystal will detach from the Interceptor and attack the enemy target, slowing the foe down in the process. That's a nice bit of help there. Finally, there's the Inhibitor Crystal that can be installed into all recon craft. Activate it to send a cloud that will slow down your enemies. You can also fly out a bit into the distance and activate the module again to detonate the cloud. The bigger the cloud is, the larger the explosion will be. Now, let's talk mods. Warp targeting will increase the power of your guns considerably for 8 seconds. Best combine this module with some fast reload module for maximum effect. For example, try out Warp Vortex or Jump Crystals. Emergency Jump might save your skin more than once. If your hull has more holes than Swiss cheese, the jump can help you get away at a safe distance. Be careful though, there is always a possibility that your craft could be carried into an even bigger danger. But you sometimes have to risk it all to win big. The Virtual Particle Condenser Hull Mod will restore part of your damage to Tykin every time you use this module. It can be further improved using Warp Vortex and Jump Crystals, since the mod takes only 25 seconds to cool down, followed by the Emergency Stasis System available to all Illidium Faction craft. This mod will prevent all collision damage, but will immobilize your craft too. Let's continue with Camouflage Shield Refractor, a device that renders your ship invisible to enemy radars. But if you plan to use it, make sure your craft has a tough enough hull. The refractor will burn through your shields to work. The Taikin also has a unique missile weapon. The crystal mine is similar to the proximity mine, but with a surprise. Once detonated, it will not only deal serious damage, but it will also slow down all cooldown timers for enemy guns and modules. That's a bad surprise for your enemies should you get within range to use it. In order to get all of the above-mentioned upgrades, you will have to level up your Taikin to a certain rank and invest some resources to a blueprint of the required module. Leveling takes credits, Xeno Crystals, and Synergy Points. But this new ship is not the only surprise of this update. Now the game has a new PvE mission, available for any tech rank. Enter the Ariadne's Thread. Trust me, you haven't seen the likes of this one. The composition of the enemy force and extra objectives will change with every new attempt to beat the mission. Yes, you don't have to deal with extra objectives if you don't want to, but they yield additional rewards. Throughout the mission, you'll have to deal with various tasks, from destroying a certain object to escorting an ally destroyer. But your main objective is to fight off an invasion of cybers. Whatever the mission set up, expect heavy resistance. You will have to fight a whole fleet of enemy craft supported by an elite engineer capable of restoring shields and hulls of its brethren. Enemy elite recon craft can render your foes invisible, while enemy ECM interceptor might disable primary systems of allied craft. Put together, these will seriously hinder your combat ability, and this list of troubles is far from over. So, had enough yet? No, no, don't worry, we have lots more to show you. Get yourself another cup of your favorite drink and let's continue. SR Mark III Beta Catalyst Implant now adds improved hull resistance to shield resistance, 7 units to be precise, for every ship that is currently targeting you. The developers have also improved all modules for tackler fighters, apparently in order to better prepare these ships for new Illidium interceptors entering the fray. Heavy Guard Drone module now prevents the use of microwarp and teleport within its area of effect. The good old inhibitor beam now has the same effect, which will only work for a single target though. Now, the Sentry Drone will also debuff enemy movement by 30%. Also remember that Verger and Axe Access ships are being removed from production with this update, but if you have them in your hangars, you have them for good. This is it for this episode. See you in space!